What's poppin' Brar Hive? It's your boy Mata Brar, the guy who played basketball for two years, redshirted for all of those years, was the highest scoring redshirt, and still sucked ass, but still acted like he was really good. Me, Mata Brar. Today we have someone who is good at basketball. He was on a few, like 10 months ago, and he is still better than me. He's also much taller than me, and that makes me really sad. But, sir, please introduce yourself. Uh, one, two, three, and there you are. Hey, what up, guys? My name is Ramon Singh I'm from Xavier Basketball. Uh, me and Metal haven't played yet, so there's no real way of telling who's better. So we'll see. We'll see what happens when we eventually play. Um, but how tall are you again, bro? Uh, how tall I am, really, or how tall I tell females I am? How tall are you, really? I'm uh, 5'10". 5'10 ten in shoes? Ish. 5'10 ish. In, in shoes or without shoes? Uh, I think without shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, sweet. Well, we, we're going to have to get this game running when you guys get out of lockdown. 100%. Yeah. I'll come down to Cincinnati. Yeah, man. You know, I can't dunk, but I'll lay up on you. I'll take you down. <laughs> All right, sounds good, bro. Yeah. So, first off. Yeah. How have you been? How like, how's Xavier doing right now? Um, I've been good, man. Um, well, right now it's the off season, so we've been kind of just going to skill workouts, and um, I've been trying to develop my game a little more for my senior year. Um, trying to decide, you know, kind of the future I'm taking right now because you know it is kind of a big moment being a senior um, at a school, and there's just so many options of what I can do. Um, after school that it's just like i'm kind of in that weird phase of you know it's school isn't on right now for me and it's kind of like so much you know there's a bit of free time then there's also time where it's just a lot of decisions to make so that's what i've been on recently yeah so uh yeah that's always scary like i'm going into my fourth year and i'm just like yeah what the fuck am i gonna do like reality kind of kicks in doesn't it yeah it's like oh like you know Everything you do from this point onwards is like really important. Now yeah. everything matters. Everything matters now. A little bit, yeah, yeah. You when you're a sophomore and it's like, oh, like no one really cares. But like now it's like, oh. I was like, oh shit, know. dude. Now Pivotal. make a decision. That'll be the rest of your life. Damn yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, the deep end. so how was last season? How did that season go? Last season was good. Um, it was a big learning year for us and we I mean it was just a lot of adversity that we had to respond to and I felt like we did but it's it was just like a, a, a an unorthodox season uh, yeah. with the whole COVID stuff and dealing with you know shutdowns and um, just having a whole bunch of different situations thrown at us you know playing in gyms where there was no one around literally it was like a closed scrimmage um, you know, playing in, like, we'd go on the road and we'd be expecting to play in an arena and we'd play in, like, a practice gym. And it's like, oh, like, what? You know, it was just, it was weird. It was a weird season, but um, a lot of growth, definitely. And and uh, the exciting thing about our team is we all come back and, you know, pretty much the majority of us are really returning. So it's going to be a very exciting uh, season coming up. Yeah. So, like, um, mm -hmm. that's one thing I was, I was want to ask. How is it, like, yeah, so, like, obviously you're playing, like, in like empty arenas now how much yeah. does that how much does that differ from like uh playing like a, a packed out crowd because like uh because yeah, like with me because as a martial artist like i yeah. did i did tournaments but it's like usually small crowds uh like maybe like a couple hundred people if yeah. we're lucky um how like uh, xavier has like it's like 10 20 000 ish right yeah it's about 10 10 000. how uh, does it feel now with like no well, one well yeah because like uh it would be like we'd always sell out home games so we're like me being you know kind of privileged enough to have been there for two three years prior to that it's like every game was just sold out sold out sold out and it's such a fun vibe you know it's such you get so used to it that when it's empty it's like it's like it, you know it, it just doesn't feel right you know um but you know we had we had like 300 fans i think um throughout the season so there was people in the building but it was just it was so different you have to kind of bring your own energy um that's huge like you know when you go on a run it's like still quiet you know and it's like it's just awkward like you know a huge highlight player a game winner or something and it's just silence except for the players so it's like 
I don't know. It was, it was an interesting experience. Um, I think the most difficult thing was going on the road to these different venues. You know, when you go to like Georgetown, for example, um, it was like a, a hot gym. Like it was this like military bunker of a gym. And it was like, what, what are we doing? It didn't feel like a game day. You know what I mean? Like walking in and, and that was, you know, an interesting experience to like have to bring your own kind of energy. And I mean, you always do, but it was just so much more important, you know? Yeah. To, I guess yeah, that, I'm, yeah. I guess imagine like the you have the dunk of the year and then it's just it's just this guy in the like empty gym saying yeah and yeah, it's just like crickets <laughs> everywhere else yeah 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 it was like uh it was like having like one fan at a game you know that like energy it was that was exactly it though like it was the I mean the bench was fun um it was weird being so spaced out you know you'd you'd have socially distanced kind of chairs and you'd have to wear like a face mask and stuff so it was like. I don't know. It was just such a weird like experience. Like, it definitely is like a something you could tell your kids, like you said before, like you know this whole COVID experience. Like they'll probably be like, "Dad, like what are you doing? Like what are you talking about? Like you know, please shut up." But that was the whole like experience, you know. Like it was just it was so weird. I'm so happy it's over though. Like for the most part, hopefully, fingers crossed. You know. Yeah, it's over in Cincinnati. In Calgary, we're still fucked. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, like, um, yeah, so, like, like I, was talk- I was talking to someone about this, so, like, um, yeah, like, does it, like, yeah, the energy feels different, but, like, um, mm-hmm. I was talking with my friend, like, um, do you feel like, do you feel like it's harder to play with no crowd, because, like, because usually when we have, when you have a crowd there, you, you have, like, a bigger expectation to perform better and better and better, yeah. but, but there's no one there, so it's, like, in your head, it's, like, there's no one to, like, impress really or like to yeah yeah i mean it depends on the player honestly because sometimes players you know kind of psych themselves out with a crowd and then sometimes players like really live for the crowd yeah um so that was just such an interesting experience it was a mix for everybody um everyone had like a different approach um but yeah no i i definitely feel the vibe of like you will play better if you have like a girl in the stands that you're trying to impress like you know you you take like a couple extra threes you know you start taking some heat checks you know but yeah it's if that if that like was there it would have been a it would have been a different season completely i feel like if we had fans so but that's just speculation you know you don't really ever know i, I think it's, it's such a like just what you said right there such a vibe uh let me just tell you a quick story uh my first yeah. season of basketball my like my first point ever in my basketball yeah. career the girl i liked was she went she came to watch the game she came to watch me play i hit yeah. that shot i swear to god she, she she didn't even she missed she missed my shot she's just like this she's on her phone she she was on her phone for that shot like the whole time she's watching she's cheering but um i i i go for a layup i, I get fouled and then i'm at the free throw she looks at her phone for a second just to open up snapchat to record me getting the shot oh uh, and she missed the shot she missed it and she was like she's like uh she came me after the game I missed your first shot, but I saw you hit the second free throw. So it's like really good. I'm like, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, like uh, is what it is. That's yeah, that's my even, entire how season. How are you and that girl going today? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> we haven't talked in a long ass time. <laughs> you just view each other's stories now. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm blocked. Drake, oh no, uh, it is what it is. Yes, sir. On to the next. On to the next. You know? On to the next one. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> so, um, so yeah. So with the season, uh, what did you guys finish with as a record? I have no idea, honestly. I don't. I don't really <laughs> pay attention to that. Um, oh damn. <laughs> we were above five hundred. I know that. I think we. I think that's solid. It was just so weird. Like, yeah. I, like with our games being canceled, like it wasn't like a thirty game schedule. It was like a. I think we had 13 or 11. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was so hard to watch too. Like uh, just as a fan. Yeah. And, and so because I usually, I, I have two teams I root for in March Madness. First it was just yeah. Duke. But now yeah. because now because we're homies, I yeah. have to, I have to go for Xavier as well. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So but I'm, neither I'm, of us made it this year. So I know it was, I was yeah. like, both of us, I'm just waiting like, God damn it! Who do I vote for now? <laughs> yeah, next year, next year should be different. I mean, we're really preparing well. We just got a new transfer, 
um, from Indiana just then, like an hour ago. So he should help us a lot. He's six seven, small forward. Uh, he was like a top fifty player. And so I mean, we, we've added a lot of play, uh, players. We added some kid from Iowa who's really good. Uh, played behind Luke Gaza. Um, and then everyone returning, it's like really exciting for us to, you know, kind of have this next season coming up. There's a lot of pressure, but it's you know it's going to be very exciting for sure. You guys are too tall, okay? Six seven. And you say, you say casually, oh, he's like six, seven, and just move on to the next thing. Man. Definitely. I mean, I feel short, you know, around the guys. Um, How tall are you again? Six, four. God yeah, I feel, damn. I'm like one of the shorter guys. So, I mean, it's, yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely an experience. You know, you go from that to hanging out with your other homies and it's like. I'm looking at you with like. Confidence. Just... World's smallest violin right here. Oh, I'm six four. I'm one of the shortest ones. Oh. <laughs> well, it's full of time, yeah. God damn yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't want to be like a big guy. Like I know a lot of guys are always like, "Oh, I wish I was, you know, six eleven. Like, nah, I don't think I would. Dude, I've mean, seen, seen that video of Shaq. We have this. Yeah, I've seen that video. Shaq. That video of Shaq and like, uh, he's sitting in Mini Cooper. Dude, that was the funniest thing yeah. ever. Like his like knee is like. Up to his Adam's apple, just trying yeah, to drive yeah. this shit, dude. Um, I can't. we were having this, we were having this convo the other day in the weight room about um, this player, and I don't know. He went to some school in North Carolina, and he was like eight, not eight, but he was like seven foot, like six or like some crazy, like really tall. And we were watching his highlights, and he was really blocky, like he was like heavy footed and stuff. But I mean, that's what you expect when you're that tall. And we were just watching like a whole bunch of stuff about him, and uh, one of our strength coaches like knew him or like knew the coaching staff and they said like when we go to class like he, he couldn't even sit on like a chair and stuff like it was just like a depressing life that he lived because he was just so tall like you can't fit through doors like you can't sit in the car bro like you can't get the back seat on anything like plane rides like everything it's just like a pain so like and i'm at the i'm at the capacity right now of feeling that pain like even on like back, back seats like suck for me yeah like you know and then like I mean, I can fit through doors. Like, I'm not, like, a freak. But, like, you know, plane rides and stuff suck. Like, my knees are always just, like, right against it. So, like, imagine being, like, even 6'11". Like, that would just be, like, super inconvenient, you know? Yeah, like, uh, the thing is, yeah, Anthony Davis, like, because uh, his growth spurt was, like, was yeah, like instant. Was like, like yeah. from what I saw, it was, like, uh, in freshman year, he was, like, five some. Oh, your camera turned off. Oh, there it is. Good now. yeah. Yeah, and, and like freshman year, he was like five ten, five eleven. By the yeah. time he was like grade twelve or like first year of uh, college, uh, he's like already six, like seven or six ten or whatever. Yeah, he, is he right shot now. up really quick. Yeah, I can just imagine because like, as there's like there, you need custom shoes at certain like, uh, thing, yeah. right? I think after like fourteen, you it's like it gets really inconvenient. Like I think Foot Locker only sells up to fourteen. Uh, so. Okay. Then I'm good because I'm size 12 and a half, so I'm still good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, like, if you're, like, an 18, like, it's just really difficult, you know? Or, like, something crazy like that. That just sounds painful at that point. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, like, imagine, like, a new shoe drops and you really want it. It's like, no, it's no chance. You know? Yeah, like, unless you're shacked and you, you just, like, Nike, just call Nike, yo, give me those new Jordans. Give me this size yeah. 24, baby. <laughs> yeah, literally. Just, I can't handle, I can't imagine that. That's just scary. Yeah, man, it's like a weird, a weird thing to think about. All right, being like that's all. So right now, uh, what's the score of the Knicks game right now? Is it scary? It's an ad break right now, so I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> all right, so right now, uh, playoffs are going on in the NBA. Yeah. What's your, who's your pick right now to win the whole thing? We'll win it all, the Nets. The Nets? Yeah, I think the Nets will. See, I would vote for the Nets, but. Because Harden screwed over the Rockets, Rockets. I, I can't support the Nets now because I wanted really, to lose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, so, I just think I think Harden and Harden and KD and obviously Kyrie as well. They just that is just like such a core. Like all they need to do is just accept the fact that it's bigger than them and like they yeah work together to win. And like, how do you stop that? Like you can't you can't even try and contain it at that point. Yeah, and um, you got Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan there. Right, yeah, yeah. You got other guys, too, who are, like, really good. So, it's – I don't know, man. Like, it, it'll be an interesting final. I think the finals going to be the Lakers and Nets. I don't, I don't see any other kind of finals coming down. Yeah, yeah, I think so. 
yeah. my, my guess, my, my, I have some hope though that yeah. like uh, the Mavs or yeah. uh, the or the Phoenix somehow wins it all. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, because... they need it. They need to make it. I mean, the elephant in the room is LeBron. If they get past him, it's kind of like smooth sailing in a yeah. way. Yeah, and right now, uh, the Lakers game just happened like a few, like a little bit ago. Okay, it's on right now. Uh, I think it just ended. Let me just quickly check what that score is. Yeah. Oh, dude, the Suns oh. won. They did. Oh, that's huge. Yo, yeah, they have oh. they have home court, but like that's that's you know if the Suns win the series, I mean it's such a tough like playoff series for the Lakers. Like obviously the Suns are a great team. Yeah. You dude, know? just the NBA is so fun right now. Yeah, right. I was talking about that the other day. I was like, I, like I'm so excited for these playoffs. Like I never really am, but this year it's like seems different, you know. Yeah, like I think the only, like, in the past five, no, actually no, past yeah five years, I've only been excited yeah. for two playoffs, uh, the yeah. 2016 playoffs because like that was yeah. insane, yeah, and the one where the the Raptors won because yeah, Canada, Canada. I was super into that. Yeah, I was super into that playoff series. I remember that. That was really cool. And I'm not a fan of Giannis, so like seeing Giannis like. Like, I don't know. I just want the Bucks because my cousin, when, whenever we played 2K, he just spams Giannis. So I just go to, like, yeah. hate, hate Giannis yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Giannis, dude, he's, mad. he's, like, broken in the game. It's stupid. Oh, my God. He's so good in the game. Anyone picks, like, Milwaukee, and it's, like, it's just, like, you can't do that. It's unfair. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and just seeing Kawhi make him cry, I'm, like, this is the best. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I do, I do like Giannis, I do like the Bucks, um, but yeah, no, like that was a huge win for like Toronto. I, I felt like obviously being a Drake fan, like I was like super into it too, and I love Kawhi as well. And I was, I was just like, that was like such a good time, like in in the world, you know? Yeah. When Toronto <laughs> won, and then Drake dropped like Omerto or whatever. <laughs> like it was just such a good like, yeah. You know, that, that was a fun. You know? That was, was a like, fun summer. Hundred percent fun oh, yeah, summer. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, so you have the you have the Nets win the whole thing. Who what do you yeah. have for, who do you have for MVP this year? Because like that because that's I like really so highly debatable right now. It's got to be Steph. Like I I mean I don't think I don't know I I don't know who's gonna get it obviously, but I really I think Steph deserves it so much. Like, Has anybody he is won? So good. Has anybody ever won uh, MVP not making and, uh, the? Uh, surely playoffs? yeah, I think I think a few have yeah. I think it was like. Um, I think it was like guys like I don't I don't want to be held to this, but I think it was like Oscar Robinson maybe or like someone like back in back in the day like maybe oh um, Kareem Nash? I think he did the Steve Nash maybe maybe yeah maybe that was his season I don't know but it is tough like Damian Lillard said the other day he was like I was an eight seed and, yeah. you know I wasn't even considered and I was like fuck like you know yeah like, I have Jokic because dude I just want to see Jokic get some love man Jokic yeah is- he doesn't get he is a dad bod and he's killing everyone. I want, he is like, he's the dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you think the uh, Nuggets are going to do? Who are okay. they playing first series? Oh, uh, let me check. Let me check. Dude, I don't know. It's so hard to watch NBA nowadays because, like, I don't know. It's just hard to watch for some reason. The games? The games are really long. Games are long and, I don't know. It just, it just, it doesn't feel like the same hype because, like, yeah. not. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Right now, ooh, the Nuggets are playing the Trailblazers tomorrow. Okay, that would be a good series. That's me. I think yeah, that'll be good. Uh, yeah. Ye- and yesterday, yesterday they played, and who won? What the hell? I don't even know. This whole my phone's bugging right now. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I don't know. If the Mavs win, that'll be that'll just be the best in my opinion. Cause yeah. Luca. Will solidify himself as the next goat, as a baby yeah. goat. Definitely, yeah. If he wins an NBA championship, for sure. All right, that'd be kind of like Chuck. Yeah. yeah. This this season, uh, who uh, like in college, who do you uh, who was one of the best people you played against? Uh, the teams played against. Um. Because honestly, I've been I've been really all off of it with the NBA draft and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so players or teams? Uh, let's go, let's go teams first. 
Okay, teams, we we played a lot of tough games um, in conference, and just being a Big East guy, it's like those teams were really different. Um, we were undefeated pre-conference, yeah. So we we're coming in nine nine and zero, I think. And then, um, yeah, teams like I think Georgetown deserves a lot of credit as a team. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they didn't go on a run in, in March Madness, but they went on a run before and they won out conference. Um, UConn was good this year. They had like a kind of disappointing um situation dealing with injuries and stuff yeah. like that like they didn't they were never really full potential you know what they could have been um and then we didn't play villanova at all this year so it was weird um you know props out to um teams like creighton you know like yeah. those teams like they had, they had a lot of players this year and you know they were really good and um guarding them was like one of the most difficult like i remember how zoned in everyone was in the practice and yeah, so teams like I think Big East deserves a lot of credit, um, Providence as well and stuff like those are those are real teams that um, we struggled against, like in terms of preparing and um, obviously the games that we lost were in the Big East. So, yeah, um, players are the guys probably like uh, you know the guys who won a lot of awards within our conference, like guys like David Duke's getting it probably drafted coming up um, from Providence and. Uh, Sandro, the the big guy from Seton Hall, he's really good. Like we just had, there was, there was a lot of good guys um, in the Big East. Who, again, like it, it seems. I mean, we're a Power Six conference, but it's like it seems like compared to like the Big Ten and other conferences like that, people kind of sleep on the Big East, you know. And yeah. it's it's easy to sleep on a conference when it's like there's no football, you know. So it's kind of like oh, you know, from football, people, Big Ten fans, and like maybe like uh sec fans you know they start and they're, they're watching football and then it transfers over to basketball and then you know it's just a whole year-round thing but for us it's just like you gotta wait for the season you know yeah all right so moving on from basketball uh yeah. tiktok everyone's favorite app <laughs> yeah uh you've had a, you've you've had some good shit on tiktok recently eh thanks man yeah so okay yeah. i think i think tiktok that uh i don't know uh I don't know, when, after we scheduled this, uh, I just want I just want to see one on your TikTok, see if any TikToks that didn't hit my for you page. And yeah. dude, dude, the, uh, still the funniest one was the uh, NBA roster one. Oh, the um, like the two K roster. College? Yeah, yeah, that shit I was, was still so... hated about that. I was like, what? The f like, are you kidding me? Like, um, no, I mean it was cool. Obviously, it's uh, I'm not like complaining. I think it's a blessing yeah. to be in a video game, but. You know, I was just like, "What the fuck?" Like, are you serious? I they made me the ugliest character, and then they, they uh, might like. I mean, they gave me a jump shot, which I'm uh, happy, but it was just like, "What the fuck?" I was like looking at it. I was like, "Dude, serious?" So I was. It, it was a heat of the moment kind of thing. Um, but I, I obviously, I don't, I don't have a PlayStation Five on me. But if I did, I would just be addicted to it, and that's the reason why I don't bring it over here to the U.S. I have all my stuff back home. Just because yeah. I would be, I would be running college rosters all day, like <laughs> getting no schoolwork done. Like that's how it was when I was back home. Like I don't want to be doing that here, you know. Dude, imagine if they bring back the college basketball. Uh, oh, games. that game! Yeah, it the NCAA rad. games. Would to, the, those would were the get, shit. Like, right? Oh my god! If they did, even if it's football, like I would be so with it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember. Sure. I remember. I found. I think they were on the PS2 or PS3 last. I had yeah. one, I had one of them. My cousin my, my cousin brought it home, brought it to my house one day. Mm. We were running. I didn't. I was like, sure, I was like ten. I didn't know who the hell people were. Yeah. But afterwards, I'm like, I, I'm like, then like two couple years ago when I started watching basketball, I'm like, I remember that guy. He dunked on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it like brings you, um, I guess, like an image around the college player. So it's yeah, it's fun to have that aspect of it. Yeah, because people even now they don't, uh, they don't like stay that up to date with like college basketball, which mm -hmm. I've always argued that college basketball, like especially in the month of March, is the yeah. most fun basketball you'll see ever. Yeah, yeah. No, I completely agree. Yeah, because um, like in playoffs, like um in the NBA, these guys are already multi millionaires, so like even like if they lose, oh yeah, it's not that big because they're already being being. You go, paid. Yeah, you go home to your, yeah. It's like it's. The ramifications for losing the NBA, I don't think they're as high as you know college. It's like it's more, a lot more grit to it. There's a lot more like just you know effort involved, and I just love the fact that it's you know there's so many schools too. So it's like 
wherever you're from, you know, you've got a local school pretty much. Um, what would, what was, what's your closest like college D1 team to you? Uh huh. Would it be like Buffalo? No, that's that'd be Toronto. Uh, oh. uh we yeah, like are US. next to Montana ish. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. Is, is there anything in Montana? There is. Montana has a school. Um, yeah, Montana Grizzlies or something. Are they good? Okay. Um, I don't think they're in a huge conference, but I think they're not a bad team. I think they do make much madness every once in a while. So, no. yeah. All right, all right, all right. That's uh, that is yeah, right. actually interesting. Who else? Who was next to us? Oh, I th- oh, and Washington, and like yeah, cause Seattle's. Okay, different. yeah, yeah. So you got U UW, um, your Washington State. Like you got good schools already. Yeah, we we got some. We got some here. Yeah, yeah. Who knows when COVID ends? I might come through for a game. Yeah, definitely. Let me just be like, yo, yo I'm in Montana. Mess me. Oh, in Montana, I'm Montana. Yeah. I'll get my boys. We'll pull up. Yeah. Pull up to a Montana game. Go to the tryouts and see if you. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I think you got to be a student, but I mean, I'll... get a fake, fake uh, student card or something, and just pull up and. I'll try for the G League. I'll try for the G League. You know. Yeah, I don't think there's a Montana team. I'm not sure, but. I'll I'll, I'll find the closest G League tryouts. I will. Yeah. Dr- I will drive there. I will not fly out. I will drive there. I will dribble the entire way there, just dribbling out of the car. I am ready. G League 2022. Yes, sir. I'll meet you in the league. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Imagine. That'd be amazing. Podcaster versus like, TikToker. This this video will get millions of views. It'd, it'd be like, amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Wait, we're talking about TikTok too. <laughs> Where did all this come yeah, from? Yeah, we got sidetracked a little bit. Yeah. All right. So with TikTok, um, uh-huh. so obviously, um, has TikTok helped uh, help like with any anything basketball related, or is it just like, because like obviously it's, it's getting your name out there a little bit more. Yeah. Which is always um, good. Yeah. I don't know if it's helped uh, basketball wise. Have, have, have your teammates been roasting you for me being a TikToker? Um. Yeah. 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 Like they'll definitely. Um, I'll definitely say some shit about like TikTok and be like, oh, oh, TikTok boy, you know. Like, <laughs> but it's funny, like you know, they all have TikTok, so they all like you know, it's they put out video. If they do, it's so funny to just like go back at them for their videos and stuff. It's it's good banter, like definitely. But um, I don't know, like yeah, I don't think it's helped from a basketball standpoint, from a effic- effectiveness standpoint. But it's definitely such a cool app, and I love everything about it. I spend way too much like time on that app all the time. Dude, TikTok yeah. is the is the best and worst app at the same time. It's the best. Yeah. It's so fun, but it's the worst because I will get sidetracked. Like, oh my god, for yeah. hours. And then, like, have you ever seen the the guy um, that comes up where he's like, get some food and water? Uh which one was that? I think so. Yeah, it's like you no, know, it's like when you scroll for like three hours straight. There's like a TikTok notification that's like oh, you yeah. should get some food and water and like. Maybe come back later. You know, you've been on this app too long. Like, I get that way too much. I'm like, like stop parenting like, me, TikTok. I'm an adult. <laughs> if yeah, I want to ruin my body, I can. The comments to that video is so funny. Like, it's those are, always yeah, so literally. fun, man. Yeah, yeah. I think I made a couple TikToks like that too. Just like, hey, you've been scrolling for a while. Why don't you just chill out for a little bit? And then the comments were literally something to fuck off. Yeah, right? I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so okay, um, couple of your TikToks have like popped off on meme pages, uh, yeah. which, which as you told me you didn't even know about. Which I is, have no idea. It's yeah. just, again, the meme pages are the worst when it comes to this. They don't they won't give you credit for anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel that like uh, yeah yeah? How do you feel like as a, just that's what I'm not basketball. To, how do you feel as a content creator that just doing your shit? Um, obviously it's like what the fuck but if the other like the other side of it is tiktok is such a weird app in terms of like anyone can create content and get like, like pretty much famous overnight you know and like it's changed so many people's lives like in terms of um i mean it hasn't really changed my life too much but in terms of i guess you could say like bryce holes or addison rays you know it's made them celebrities you know um dude has a boxing match or some shit coming up i'm like what little babies performing at that i was like what how is this like wait wait really we went from dancing 
Yeah, he went from dancing in videos to having a boxing event where he's the headliner, like the head fight, and he's got a little baby performing. And I'm like, dude, what? Like, I guess this is, you know, this. it's awesome that the app can do that. So, I mean, if you want to steal people's content to try and make it out, like, by all means, steal my content, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I don't think, I don't think, so it's, funny. I don't think it's going to be like, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I want to definitely put out more videos and, and grow um kind of my following on tiktok i don't think it can hurt in any way to have a good social following um, yeah you know so yeah. <laughs> dude that boxing match thing just every time I, I hear about it it pisses me off for some reason right yeah do you see the press conference and all that i saw a little bit of it, it yeah it hurts me to watch that stuff because i'm like they're not even fighters i saw yeah. them, i saw them i saw them train they train like someone just started like a week ago <laughs> Really? I uh, yeah, I haven't seen any training, but I definitely want to watch the fight. Um just to see, you know, how bad they are. Uh, yeah. As a fighter, I'm like I just wanna watch someone get their ass kicked at this point. Yeah, I wanna see him go against like I wanna see Bryce Hall against someone real, you know? That'd be cool. Those Jake Paul fights though, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, those are those which are interesting. One's, which one's fighting uh, Mayweather? Is that Logan or Jake? I think it's uh I don't know. I think it might be Jake. Oh, yeah. whoever's fighting Mayweather though, <clears throat> I feel like that's just bad for his career at this point because it's like, like for Mayweather's career because he's yeah he went from fighting the best fighters to ever live to to a YouTuber yeah so I'm like yeah just just do some do better you know yeah 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 I don't know how it's I mean he's been called out so much for it so it's like he kind of has to but like yeah it's it's kind of like I mean he's gonna make a lot of money off it Mayweather everyone knows he's all about his money so. Yeah, I mean, you know, dude, the guy's basically the guy's a billionaire at this point. It's like, it, it, it like, eh, there was another couple hundred, you know. Yeah, if he, um, I think if he invested more or like, you know, was really more about like building his equities and stuff, like he would be like, definitely like a Bill Gates type guy. Like he's had so much money, but he just he blows his money. Like, and it's, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't know what I would do with that much money. So, you know, credit to the guy. Honestly, yeah. I'd probably be, yeah, blowing it. All right, so uh, back to basketball. Yeah. I, I, I asked a couple of my buddies, yo, what, what would you ask a college player? And yeah. these are some questions that they had. One, okay. do you think there should be a four-point line? No. Nah? No. Not for that? I think it would just be so garbage. Just to see, like, the three-point line would have, like, barely any significance, and then it would just be, like, oh, it would just be so many. It would change the whole dynamic of the game way too much. Like in a bad way? In a bad way? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this it would be so easy to drive at that point because, like, what's two points, you know? Or, like, what's a free throw? Like, who cares? Like, you could just hit fours. Like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. Uh, Yeah, it'd be weird. uh, Second, um, who, um, who's the best player you played against in your career? Oh, man. Um, there's been so that's like probably the hardest question for me to answer. There's been so many like throughout high school and college that's like guys who have just you know obviously been to the NBA and like had good careers in the NBA and then there's guys that didn't really make it but they were at the time they were like crazy you know. Um, I don't know honestly that's yeah I would have to like sit down and like think for ages to. Guys, that's the broadcast. We ask the hard hitting questions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, of all the, um, of all people, uh, you're pretty, so you're probably pretty tight with some people in the NBA then, right? That, like, in the league right now? Um, yeah. Wh- uh, which of your, which of your boys, uh, is, are any of your boys in the playoffs right now? Yeah, Jaron is in the, uh, playoffs. He's in, he's in, Memphis made it in. Um, he beat Jordan, who's. John Paul, who's, you know, obviously was another teammate of mine in high school. So, um, yeah, I think Jaron's the only one that's um, that I'm really close to. Uh, yeah. So, they've got a tough matchup, I think. That's AC sick. playing one seed, so, yeah. All right. And last question. Yes yeah. or no? All right. If we played one-on-one, could I beat you? Could I annihilate you in a one-on-one? <laughs> I just, uh, no. 
it's just blunt answer no I, I have a lot of people say that to me like not even say that but they're like you know they're like oh like just play one-on-one or whatever like it's like bro like no like i mean i play like every single day like for ages and ages and i've, I've had games where i've like <laughs> Obviously, you don't shoot the ball well in a 1v1. And, like, to play against someone who doesn't play as much as I do, it's just, like, you know. See, that that goes to show one thing, guys. Because, like, I see a lot of people just talk shit about college players in general. That's yeah. what that's maybe that's that question. Because, like, I'll go on, like, I'll go on Twitter or something and just see people just talking shit about college players. Like, oh, they all suck. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Even, like, even the people that even the people that don't even play are yeah. still better than, like, the still better than like the average like guy who just shoots around in oh, his def- drive yeah stuff, definitely right? yeah yeah i mean i mean yeah games are so different to like just playing you know like whether it's like a coach that's like strict on running a play or it's like you know it's just such a different dynamic to be a good player in a game and then a good player in pickup or a good player playing one-on-one you know like it's just a it's that's such a big difference so yeah, it's honestly, it's I, yeah. I would say yeah, probably the worst college basketball player is definitely a lot better than the average, you know, YMCA guy. You know, definitely. Yeah, and I think oh yeah, and you know, a lot of people have been asking me this question on the broadcast, and I'll yeah. So, and so I'll, I'll just I'll drop a little story time. You know, who Jay okay. Sean is because you're a brown guy. So you know who Jay Sean is? Yeah, yeah, I know okay. Jay Sean. Uh, so a few months ago, I had him on the podcast, all right? Yeah, yeah. We had, I had him booked for one hour, and now he's my worst enemy. What did you do? I didn't do shit. This guy came, I had him booked for an hour. Yeah. He, he first, he came 15 minutes late. He did the interview, okay. he, did, he did the interview for five minutes. His headphones died, or, I don't know, his audio, whatever he was using, just died. Yeah. He said, I'll be back, and he hopped off the call, and... I tried emailing his manager and all that stuff, and then one thing led another. I got blocked. Really? Yes. This man sucks. Yeah. Jay Sean doesn't like you, bro. He does not. Jay Sean is not for the people. Yeah, I guess not, dude. Wow, Jay Sean, what an asshole. I know, right? <laughs> Here in the AFS, Jay Sean's an asshole. Uh, I'm ba- I'm ba- I'm basically starting an entire thing on the Broad Hive. Where, like at least in one interview, I ha- like yeah. basically every few interviews, I-, I have to take at least one shot at him now. <laughs> that way, when when this is the biggest podcast in the world, just randomly a uh, fuck Jay Sean just starts yeah, trending just everywhere. Plug it, yeah, put it in the intro. Oh, Definitely. <laughs> I'll make a song. Let's make. I'll make a you, did you did you publish that video? Like, did you put that video out? Um, I like I had five minutes, but only like a minute or two was actually usable. Oh. Because like uh, because like the last three minutes was like all I was all like his answer to one big question yeah and so he's he's talking about it and we just couldn't get actual footage oh okay i was gonna say make a video of like the two minutes that you had you know oh, I, so funny. I, I posted that i posted that on instagram it, it yeah. got it got some good views but i'm like yeah yeah i can't really post more <laughs> yeah i know that's tough what's uh what's he doing now with his career uh he's a tiktoker really yeah, this this dude will go on TikTok and just make brown jokes. Oh. But it's, it's like the white people brown jokes, you know? Okay. Like yeah. Mindy, it's like Mindy Kaling making jokes about brown people for white people. It's like that. Yeah. So it's not a I mean, fun time. Yeah, I mean, shit. Good for him, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I think I think we think we sold everything, right? Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. One final question. Uh huh. Is the broadcast the best podcast? I think it is. Yeah, definitely. You hear that, Joe I mean, Rogan? What? Yeah, I mean, Joe Rogan. What does he talk about? Not Jay Sean. No, he does not. Not basketball. He, he does about actually. People. Does he? Oh, he... I'm sure he has. Surely, dude. Pro- he has, pro- like, once or twice. Yeah. Probably LeBron, because yeah. LeBron is just like, like, all peak fitness. You know. Yeah, yeah. So what? Like he talks about LeBron and you talk about me. Yeah. That should that should be the, the like giveaway, the separation. Yeah, we're just better. We're that we're that much better than. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're better than Joe Rogan, Nori. Yeah, yeah. Joe Rogan and Jay Sean could both fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I have to say. No, Damn I do right. like Joe Rogan though. I do like Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah. 
I I actually signed. I actually tried getting on his show as well. I tried. You did. I tried. How do you even work? Do you apply to that? How does that even happen? I don't know. On his website, it's like uh, you email like it's an email for his booking manager. Okay. Yeah. So I tried hitting him up like, hey, uh, you think you can uh. And I, I'm pumping myself up. Like, yo, Matab Brar is a revolutionary comedian. He's taken over Canada. He has like, yeah. the biggest podcast in the country. All, yeah. all bullshit. And Damn. I haven't heard back. <laughs> Damn. Well, give it, give it some time. Maybe, maybe you will. Maybe, or maybe just start spamming. Like every day, send the exact yeah. same email. <laughs> or you can make a TikTok saying, um, people do that now. Like make TikToks like every day, posting every day until you know. I get a response. Oh, I don't see that. That could work. That could be a yeah, vibe. I'm like the booking manager. It would be I'll... really annoying for your followers to just see you every day. <laughs> booking yeah. manager of Joe Rogan, still here. <laughs> like, day, day 300. <laughs> day 300? I lost all my followers, but I don't give a shit. Joe Rogan's booking manager hit me up. I lost 22,000 followers. followers for this. Imagine you have zero followers. Joe yeah. Rogan, I really want to be on the show. <laughs> Please, I have nothing left. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I need. And yeah. Br- Brarhide, that is it for today. Oh, wait, do you remember the sign out? It was about wear a condom, wasn't it? Yeah. So I said stay hydrated. You say wear a condom. Okay. And Brarhide, that is it for today's episode with Mr. Ramon Singh. Remember, guys, one day me and him will play one v one when COVID restrictions are lifted. So get ready for seeing me dunk on this man. <laughs> And as always, remember to stay hydrated and wear a condom. And we will see you guys next time. Peace!